Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to you here and also for those joining us online. This morning's service is being live streamed. So wherever you are enjoying the service, you are most welcome. Today is our Bible Month Week 2, and we are pleased to have Reverend Adam leading the service as we continue to explore the book of Isaiah. And the team chosen for today is Light to the World. We will continue our service and light the candle for our prayers as we continue, for, uh, continue to pray for Ukraine. So I will light the candle. So let us have a silent moment as we bring ourselves to the presence of God. A very good morning to you, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, my good friends and church family. I'm so delighted to be back. Um, for those who knew, I've been away for my holidays, so I'm back. And uh, I thank God to find, you know, everybody, I believe that you are all well. <laughs> God has been gracious to us. Um, for me, the delighting thing is to be back and find the flock in place. So I give glory, honor, and praise to the Lord. So for those following us online, um, yes, greetings to you and blessings from the Lord as we gather in this space to worship. So um, for the theme that we have uh, chosen today, light to the world. Friends, in this world that is characterized with darkness, in this world that is characterized with brokenness, with the hate and pain, I'm going to light yet another candle. Um, and as we light this candle, we are reminded that God is the light of the world. May we have his light in our hearts and in our lives. God is the light of the world. So we light this candle as we are reminded of that fact that God is with us. So as we begin our worship, we shall, speak, we shall sing, Speak, O Lord, as we come to you. Uh, please, if we can join, let us join in this worship. Speak, O Lord. That's our first to him. Thank you. 
Please make a seat. <clears throat> At this moment in time, we bring our prayers of adoration. These are prayers of praise. And then we'll also bring our prayers of confession. By praise, friends, uh, that's what God requires of us. He requires of us to praise him. Because to praise him is, is to give him, he's worthy. It's just to acknowledge that he is God. So now we draw before the presence of God as we offer our prayer of adoration. Let us pray. We adore you because you are the king. And for that reason, we will praise you. You are holy, and we will bow before you. You are the savior, and we will trust you. You are almighty, and we will save you. You are the Lord, and we will adore you. Therefore, Sovereign Lord, we come this morning bringing the baggage that we have carried with us for most of our lives. We have come, O oh Lord, bringing our concerns and our worries and the concerns and questions for which we still have no answers. We have come, O oh Lord, with the frustrations and emptiness that cripple our lives and encompass our days. Lord God, we come, bringing all that we have and all that we are into the presence of the one who is the bread of life, that as we adore you, you may bring healing to us and glory to him. Lord, this is our prayer of praise. Amen. Our prayer of confession. Lord God, we confess that we are not the people you made us to be, nor are we living the kind of lives that you intended. We confess that we criticize others for the mistakes we so easily excuse ourselves. We confess our blindness to our own faults and our microscopic examination of each other's weaknesses. We confess our failure to be the forgiving, accepting people Christ called us to be. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. Renew and forgive us for Christ's sake. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are going to hear um, our lessons for this morning. So we are reading, friends, the book of Isaiah. That's the chosen book for our Bible month. And also we shall have a passage from the book of Acts. I'm going to invite our readers, please. Our reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 16 to 25. In days to come, the people of Egypt will become weak. The Lord, who rules over all, will raise his hands against them. Then they will tremble with fear. The people of Judah will bring terror to the Egyptians. Everyone in Egypt who hears the name of Judah will be terrified. That's because of what the Lord, who rules over all, is planning to do to them. At the time, the people of five cities in Egypt will worship the Lord. He is the Lord who rules over all. They will use the Hebrew language when they worship with him. They will promise to be faithful to him. One of those cities will call the city of the sun. At the time, there will be an altar to the Lord in the middle of Egypt. There will be a monument to him at its border. They will remind people that the Lord who rules over all is worshiped in Egypt. The people there will cry out to the Lord. They will cry out because of those who treat them badly. He will send someone to stand up for them and save them, and he will set them free. So the Lord will make himself known to the Egypt, the people of Egypt. At that time, they will recognize that he is the Lord. They will worship him by bringing sacrifices and grain offerings to him. 
they will make promises to the Lord and they will keep them. The Lord will strike Egypt with a plaque, but then he will heal them. They will turn to the Lord and he will answer the prayers and heal them. At that time, there will be a wide road from Egypt of Assyria. The people of Assyria will go to Egypt and the people of Egypt will go to Assyria. The people of Egypt and Assyria will worship the Lord together. At that time, Egypt, Assyria, and Israel will be a blessing to the whole earth. The Lord who, rule, who will rule over or will bless those who, three nations, he will say, let the Egyptians be blessed. They are my people. Let the Assyrians be blessed. My hands created them. And let the Israelites be blessed. They are my very own people. This ends the reading. I'm reading from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Philip and the man from Ethiopia. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Go south to the desert road, he said. It's the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So Philip started out. On his way, he met an Ethiopian official. The man had important position in charge of all the wealth of the Kandake. Kandake means Queen of Ethiopia. This official had gone to Jerusalem to worship. On his way home, he was sitting in his chariot. He was reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The Holy Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot, stay near it. So Philip ran up to the chariot. He heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, I need someone to explain to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Here is a part of the scripture the official was reading. It says, he was led like a sheep to be killed. Just as lambs are silent when their wool is being cut off, he did not open his mouth. When he, had treated, when he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from the earth. The official said to Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with what the same part of the scripture. He told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. The official said, look, here is water. What can stop me from being baptized? He gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the official went down to the water. Philip baptized him. When they came up of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. The official did not see him again. He went on his way full of joy. Philip was next to Azotus. From there, he traveled all around. He preached the good news in all the towns. Finally, he arrived in Caesarea. Here ends the reading. Thanks to Deslin and to um, Charles for the readings. God bless you. We proceed in worship as we join the next uh, song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
On this hymn, I, I, I just want to encourage someone, you know, where especially on the on the chorus bit of it where it says, This is my story, this is my song, praising my savior all day long. You no, know, it's 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 a, it's one's experience, one's own one's testimony. So we have we all have stories to tell of how God has been good to us, how God has raised us, how God continues to be faithful to us. We all have stories. That if we had time honestly to say Let's hear from each other's stories. You'll find there's lots of stories to tell. But what is your story? From this chorus, this wonderful hymn, it says, this is my story, praising my Savior. I, I don't know about your story. But anyway, let's go back to Isaiah's story. As we are studying and you know, exploring on the book of Isaiah for this you know, Bible month, friends, from the, especially today, where we pick on the theme, light to the world, light to the world it's a, it's a wonderful you know it's a wonderful theme very encouraging indeed because that's what Isaiah sees because you know we had different prophets we, we can name them Ezekiel you know, Jeremiah Amos all these prophets you see each prophet would come bringing to the people of God whatever different messages but for a number of prophets, Hosea, all these prophets, for a number of prophets, they would see, or in their vision, they would see God who is only in favor of Israel. 
God who is a darling only for Israel as a nation. So they would see God who like judges, God who condemns other foreign nations. That's all they could see. But why do we want to you know, really read Isaiah? What is of interest for us today? For, of interest for us today is to observe that Isaiah sees God, has a different vision about God. Because Isaiah has a different vision. He sees something different from other prophets. He sees God who is all embracing. Isaiah sees a vision of a God who is all loving. Because for God, God is the creator. He is the one who created every man in his own image. So for, for Isaiah, he, he, he sees God who is inclusive. And I like that. I like that. I love that. Because that's, that's God. That's the nature of God. The God we serve. The God we worship. So if we read where we, 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 we read about Egypt. Egypt. Egypt has a character. Yeah, is, a, is a character. Egypt for many people during that time. Egypt is like a bad guy. Egypt is like a bad guy. So no one would speak anything good about Egypt. Remember, Egypt is the oppressor. For over 400 years, Egypt, you know, enslaved the people of Israel. And you, when you, have, when you read the book of Exodus, you, you would know the stories of how the, the Israelites, the people of God, suffered, you know, under Egypt. So Egypt is like a bad guy. No one would speak anything good about Israel, I mean, about Egypt. Nothing good about Egypt. But today, according to Isaiah, as I say, Isaiah sees God who is the light of the world. And you know what light does? For those like who drive at night, maybe you, you know you're driving at night, you see the, the, you know, the, the headlights on the vehicle, on the car, what they do, how they attract these insects at night. We know that you know the the light the, the light from from the, from the, 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 the shining of the lights the bright lights how they attract these insects mosquitoes whatever you see them sticking on the headlamps so the light attracts the light draws insects at night time that's what that, that's the character when Isaiah is talking about God as the light of the world. He is the light who attracts, who draws all people to himself. So no matter their tribe, no matter their race, no matter their gender, no matter where they're coming from, that bright light of God, that shining light, that radiance of God, it is so powerful that the light attracts everybody to God. The light draws everybody to God. If I were to ask each one of us here, how do you find yourself here? How do you find yourself here? How did you get here? For me, I'll say, you know, for me, I've been attracted. I've been drawn by this light of God. I've been attracted by the love of God. It is his forgiveness that has drawn me to come to this place. I know someone say, oh, no, it's my friend who brought me here. It's a good, it's good. It's your friend, but God uses your friends to draw every one of us to himself. Amen. The light of the world. God is the light of the world. So that light is very powerful. Because that light, that light will not discriminate. That light is inclusive. The light will draw everyone. All, every age tribe, race, gender, everybody is drawn. As long as we respond, everyone is drawn, is attracted to God by this light. So that's the vision of Isaiah. That's what Isaiah is seeing here. So for me, this is surprising inclusiveness. What is surprising inclusiveness? What's, what's going on here? What's wrong with God? Has God forgotten that it is Egypt who oppressed his people? Has God forgotten that it is Egypt who made his people suffer in captivity as slaves? Has God forgotten that? 
Because you see, that's what God says. Your ways of thinking, the way you think, is not the way God thinks. Our ways, the ways we see things, our attitudes, that is not God's attitude. Because if some of us were involved at all to help God in deciding, we would be saying, no, please, God, don't, don't include Egypt. Egypt are bad guys. God, don't include them in your plan. But you see, because by his nature, his ways of thinking, they are different from our ways. So God will remain God. God will always be God. That is his nature. He is all-inclusive. He is all-embracing. He says, come, my people, come. Come to me. So, you see, when, when I look around here and say, oh, but oh, even so-and-so is also here. But I'm saying, if we were involved in God's planning, you know, that's the mistake that we've made. Because we've made ourselves, you know, you know, gatekeepers. The mistake that the church has made the mistake that people in the society have is to make ourselves gatekeepers. Do you get me right? We forget that we are also, at one time, we are also guests. God has invited us. God has called us by his divine favor, by his grace, and he invites us to be guests just to sit around and to enjoy the banquet. But what do we do next? We impose ourselves. We give ourselves places that now we are the gatekeepers. We become the bouncers to decide who can come in and who cannot come in. Amen. The light of God. Please get, the, get this from Isaiah. Isaiah is seeing God who say everyone is invited. Everyone has a place. Everyone has a place. It is not our decision. It is not our choice. It is not our right. I'm saying that's the mistake of making ourselves gatekeepers to decide who comes in and who cannot come in. That's the mistake. So here we see a surprising inclusiveness where even Egypt, God is saying, Egypt, I have chosen you. I have chosen you. My name will be praised. My name will be worshipped in Egypt. Even in Assyria. Do you see what God is doing? You know, God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. He is so loving. Even in Assyria, his name, God's name will be worshipped. Because I know him. He is the God who will even provide rain for both the good and the wicked. That's God. It is the same God who will provide rain even in Russia. Amen. Even in Russia. Are you not, um, why am I saying even in Russia? Because Russia by now, people are saying, God, please God, if you could do anything, punish Russia. But God will even pour rains, will shower rain even in Russia. That, that's the nature of God. Because his ways of thinking, his ways, how God sees things, is, is far away from how we see things. Because I said earlier, if it were part, if we were to be included, oh, I'm afraid that so many people would be thrown out, the outsiders. Because how we view things, for now we'd be saying, oh, this one should, shouldn't be here. Because for us, we, we have become bouncers at the doors of heaven. We have become, you know, gatekeepers to bring some in and to kick some out. But that is not for us. God is God, the light of the world. Is attracting everyone to say, come. Come, my people, come. Because they are coming to God. So we see that according to Isaiah, God is doing something new. God is doing a new thing, a unique thing of including even the outsiders. Even the outsiders. We hear them, they are labeled. It's like there's a stigma here. You know, the eunuchs and the foreigners. See, by law, eunuchs were not allowed to come any close to anyone. But in X, we read that a eunuch is now being baptized. Isn't this amazing? Isn't God doing something new? Friends, we can never be the judges. We can never take any position to judge others and condemn others and kick others out. Because God, today we are learning, he is saying even the outsiders, they have a place. He is inviting them. He is calling them to say, 
come, come, come my people. So who are we to judge? Who are we to condemn? You remember the part, the, this story of the, the prodigal son? The prodigal son. You know, some of our attitudes, our attitudes, when this young brother comes back home, there's at home there's this big brother who gets annoyed, who gets angry, he feels jealous. Oh, why has he come back? Sometimes some of us with this attitude of this big brother in the prodigal son. We do not rejoice. We do not cherish. We do not support. We do not encourage those returnees when they come back home to the father. We want them out there in the cold. That is not Christianity. Christianity is about, you know, heart, the heart saying, please, do, I think there's still space. There's still enough space. Even when, we are, even when the house is full, we we'll still try to squeeze to say, please, have you seen in the tube when people are trying to create space for others? Even when, even on the bus, if it is full, we try to squeeze, say, there's space. But you still find someone saying, oh, I think we are full. We are full. They try to block every space. We are full. What is this about? This attitude of this big brother who does not rejoice when his brother, young brother, is back home to the father. He feels, oh, why is he back? But who are we? The light of the world. God is the light of the world. Like the loud lighthouse at sea. We see that's how God, you know, acts in our lives. The lighthouse at sea, its purpose is to guide the, the big boats and ship. To save them from disaster. That, that's the light of the world. Jesus, where Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Friends, may we try by all means to act out actions of love, of kindness, and embracing others as they come to God. Because it is that light which is attracting them, which is drawing them to God the Father. Friends, may I encourage someone today to say, so how do we radiate God's presence? We can only do so by acknowledging that we are guests that God has invited. So as long as we are guests, we will not be the hosts. Let us invite and accept and include others in God's plan of grace, in God's plan of salvation. May God bless us to be the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O oh God, for a spirit of hospitality. We pray, O oh Lord, for a spirit of generosity. We pray, O oh Lord, for a spirit of inclusion and welcome. That we would live lives that draw others to Jesus Christ. We pray for the love to be a church that welcomes outsiders who have been rejected by society. So, Lord, help us to be the light of the world. We pray. Amen. Amen. In Christ alone is our next song as we continue to sing to the glory of God. In Christ alone. Yeah. 
We join in our prayer of intercession as we bring our concerns and the concerns of the world before God. Let us pray. Loving God, light of the world, we pray for the church in this place where we meet in Bell Road, Anslow Methodist Church. Lord, we pray that may we continue to be, as a church, to be guided by your spirit, to be guided and driven by your love, and characterized by your forgiveness. Lord, help us at such a time as this, as a church, as the body of Christ, to live according to your will, to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth. Lord, we pray for this church, the young and the old. We pray for the preachers, as we also continue to pray for the wider circuit, the Richmond and Hounslow circuit, and the church worldwide, which is the body of Christ. Lord, we pray that we testify of the gospel of truth, that Jesus is Lord and that God is the light of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world, the world which is broken, the world which is filled with hurt and aching. We pray for Ukraine. Lord, we know that your mercy endures forever. At this moment when we, we, we continue to say prayers and offer prayers, as we continue to intercede for Ukraine, as if you are not hearing us, as if you are turning a deaf ear on us, yet, O oh Lord, we will not stop praying for this nation. We will not stop interceding for them. Lord, you have an answer. Because we acknowledge, we appreciate that we have so many questions, we have so many queries, but you have the answers. Lord, we shall continue to pray for Ukraine. Lives that have been lost, properties and wealth, material things damaged and destroyed, families separated, women and children driven from their homeland because of war. Lord, we pray for your divine intervention. As we also continue to pray for Russia, that may you restore them to sanity, to calm, and to, to peace. We pray for the storms in Germany, 
We pray for all other nations and places that continue to suffer distress. This time also, during the Christian aid theme, we continue to pray for Zimbabwe at a time of drought and famine and bad economy. Lord, we pray. And for all other parts of the world, Sri Lanka, we also pray for them, that, Lord, may you touch us and give us peace and quiet. We pray for our nation, the United Kingdom, those who govern us, those who lead us, give them wisdom to guide your people with wisdom and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, we pray. We pray for the sick, those in homes, those in hospitals, as we pray for your grace upon the nurses, the doctors, the carers, the families, those who support, those who are physically and emotionally vulnerable. Lord, we pray for healing and restoration. Lord, in your mercy, in your prayers. We join in the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So before we proceed to notices and closing, um, if we still have our friends online, yes, I'm going to offer a blessing for them before um, we part. So thank you. It has been um, um, wonderful to have you um, joining online, wherever you are. And may God bless you. Please, when you go away, remember that the mandate, God is sending us to be the light of the world. So let us um, say a blessing. The blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon all of us as we continue to live for him and to serve him being reminded that we are the light of the world. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. So Charles is coming. Charles is coming again to...